Ken Trahan with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank. Proud sponsor of SportsNola.com with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. Well, the Pro Bowl coming up this weekend. The Saints guys are all on one team, and that's great. And I guess that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Drew Brees had a little say-so, I think, in that and managed to get all his teammates on his side. So, it's a, you know, it's it, there's some things you want to watch in there. And, you know, obviously, at least, you, you, you know, Saints fans don't have to have split loyalties in all of this. But, uh, you know, it will be, uh, you know, still one last chance to watch uh, some of those guys, uh, you know, put on a Saints helmet for this year until we uh, do it all for real again in uh, July. And with regard to the Super Bowl, the weather prognosis changes day to day. As of today, it looks like it might be a a good weather night, all things considered. But stay tuned, that could change. There's even been some talk about uh, having a plan in case the weather is too severe. But then again, what else would you expect? I can't see that happening. And I know a lot of people wish them ill will because they made this decision. At the same time, you don't want to see that happen for all the people that have made their plans and are making the trek to New Jersey, New York. I saw somebody bring up a good point today. All this uproar over the weather, there's only 70,000 people going to the game. Why is everybody else so concerned about it? You know, everybody else could be sitting in their living rooms watching the game on TV. So what's what's the well, I think the concern for fans isn't about going. It's about the quality of the game and about about upsetting the apple cart, so to speak. I think it's atrocious that you're putting teams in harm's way when you have the biggest spectacle, not just the game, but the biggest spectacle in American sports. And as for the game itself, I've also heard the argument. Well, they've played at North before. They went to Indianapolis a couple of years ago, went to the Silver Dome previously. Yeah. And those places were indoors. Exactly. Those were in domes. But. Could it possibly be any worse than what we're dealing with in New Orleans on a Friday? What if we're playing the game? What if we're playing the game outdoors here today? Well, the fact of the matter is, the two coldest Super Bowls on record were both at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans. Go figure, yeah. it can happen. Won't happen anymore because of the Superdome. But it's an interesting discussion, to say the least. Of course, the Senior Bowl going on tomorrow. Mickey Loomis and Saints Brass have been over there all week long. Al Dupuis written about it. Ed Daniels has written about it. Who was over there, Mobile as well. So, bottom line is. They have their grades already. They'll watch the game, but the the pro people have seen what they want to see during practices. Right. The the game is really anticlimactic. It's all the practices and the measurements and those kind of things. You have three guys to watch for in here. You got a couple of LSU guys from Tulane. You got wide receiver Ryan Grand, who's had had a pretty good week of practice by all indications, and maybe helped his stock, even though his equipment didn't get there right away. <laughs> but uh, you know, still, that's a chance for him to to move up some draft boards perhaps here this week uh, in Mobile. Pelicans back in action on the road at Detroit tonight. Rumors about Greg Monroe possibly being traded. We'll see from Helen Cox. And, of course, the rumors persist about the Pelicans with regard to Eric Gordon and Tyree Gevins. A horrible loss their last time out to Sacramento. They're back home on Sunday night. I suspect we're going to see change in the second half of the season. I would think so. Here, here we are at the halfway point, and, you know, you're either move, you're moving one way or the other. And right now, a lot of it you can blame on injuries, but the Pelicans are not moving in the direction they want to be moving in. So, you know, what do they do? I don't, I don't think you just use injuries as an excuse and stand pat. I think they will try to do some things. You know, interesting, the trade that they did make uh, finally became official on Tuesday. They turned around cut the guy on Wednesday. But it ended up being a you know basically a cash situation for them. They they profited a few hundred thousand dollars out of the out of the move. So, you know you gotta you know you gotta do things if you, if you can make moves like that that help you financially, then then so be it. But at at the end of the day, what are you going to show in the second half of the season, either on the court or off the court, that's going to keep fans interested? That's that's a big if that what they've got to deal with going forward. Baseball earlier this week, you read about it, heard about it at sportsnola.com. Eddie Haynes being named the new manager of the Zephyrs, 36 years of age, coming up from high eight ball at Jupiter to take over the team. Very enthusiastic, personable man. And Pete Barricade and Adam Everett inducted into the New Orleans Baseball Hall of Fame. And, of course, you read stories about that at sportsnola.com. And like the hire, the guy is a good guy in Haynes and love the two guys that they inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, clearly, Haynes would appear to be on the fast track to get some things done at the big league level. If you move him up from high A to AAA manager, they obviously like what he has done. And you know, that, that also may suggest as well that this could be you know, maybe a little bit of a younger Zephyr's team than what we've seen in past years. So 
Um, you know, we'll see how that all plays out over the course of spring training. And, yes, congratulations uh, to Adam Everett and our good friend Pete Barraquet on their Hall of Fame inductions. Last but not least, the New Orleans Voodoo season starting in less than two months in March, and they're back in New Orleans Arena this year. And they'll do so with some new faces, some returning players as well. And announcement today among the new players, Ryan Perilou, former East St. John star, who quarterbacked at LSU, helped him win an SEC championship, but is not looked upon that kindly by a lot of LSU fans. Still, it's a long way down the road. Young man's matured, played in the NFL. Now he's kind of on the twilight side of his career, and he's trying to finish up here at home playing arena football. Great opportunity for him here. And, you know, and one thing about the, the Arena Football League, I think it's important to try to identify talent that has a tie to your area to help you know, help fill those seats and help draw back some interest. And, you know, the Voodoo's done a great job with that. You go back to, to Danny Wimprine and then most recently guys like Marlon Favorite. Now, you know, if Ryan Perrell ends up being your quarterback, I think that can only be a positive for this franchise. Indeed, I agree. And as always, Lenny, a pleasure. Look forward to a great weekend, and we'll talk on Monday. All right, see you then. That's our first NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. For Lenny, I'm Kenny. Have a great weekend and God bless you.